So basically, as we said, uh, the, the, the uh, relying on intrinsic self-healing uh, significantly limits the uh, type of materials we can use and the material properties we uh, can have, in the, especially in the virgin material. So now, um, and that's why um, around the year, the year 2000, uh, this new concept of self-healing uh, appeared, was started, uh, which is called extrinsic self-healing. The, the pioneers were uh, a group in uh, Illinois uh, led by Professor Scott White and Nancy Sodos. So um, imagine we have a typical epoxy. Uh, uh, thermoset and it has some micro cracks in it and the question is how is it going to um, heal itself what um, uh, what does it take to heal itself and so one answer is we need to have if, if a crack is propagating in the material let's say it's deep inside um, we need to have a way to add some material some additional epoxy that is initially not cured it's a liquid it goes in there in the cracked region and then heals there we, we that's what we need to have so now in terms of method of uh, delivery there, there are two ways that have been identified um, one is capsule or micro capsule based um, healing so basically um, the idea behind that is we have these micro capsules now why there are different colors it will become clear in, in a moment to you imagine this is a crack that is propagating as it goes through the material it breaks some of these uh, capsules and these capsules have a hard shell but inside them is a liquid and let's say in this case there are two colors that when they mix a chemical reaction will happen it could be, for instance, uh, one of them could be the catalyst for the other one to crosslink, or it could be um, a molecule that crosslinks the one could be a molecule, set of molecules that crosslink the other one. An alternative uh, to microcapsules is to have a vascular network of materials. I mean, the, the, the same concept, two colors apply here as well. Um, but now we can, we will be able to um, continuously supply material through this uh, uh, vascular network inside the cracked region. So in, in these two cases, in both cases, you have to keep in mind that uh, we, we don't necessarily need to be informed about the existence of crack. A crack by itself has a, has a mechanism, by, by the virtue of being a crack, that it passes through the sample, it, it breaks these microcapsules or the microvascular network, and uh, as a result of that, these uh, chemicals are uh, released. Now, uh, one of the very base, one of the, uh, I, this was the, actually not one, it was the, uh, the, the uh, first work that was published in, in Nature on this, subject and uh, this is just one of the mechanisms it's based on microcapsules and so you see one uh, microcapsule right here a uh, punctured microcapsule right here which is in the order of the uh, if you if you want to guess the uh, diameter of this guy somewhere from here to here is probably about 100 microns And so um, imagine on the right, there's a crack like here that is propagating. As it propagates, this guy goes, hits one of these um, um, microcapsules. The liquid inside this microcapsule is released. And then you may ask, what are, what are these points? These are catalysts of that chemical reaction, like could be the hardener. Now, there are different ways you can do it. I'll explain that later. But as a result of these reactions, the, as a result of this, the material in here reacting with the material here, a cross-linking will take place, which is shown by um, a change of color in here or here or here. And uh, so the material, so basically the crack, not just the crack stops propagating, uh, but 
More important than that, if you look at the two faces, oops, if you look at uh, two faces of the crack here and here, now there's a load bearing mechanism uh, between the two. Okay, so for instance, they, they did one experiment and they realized that um, the uh, virgin material in this experiment uh, that I will explain in details what this experiment is, can take a load of up to uh, roughly uh, about 210 uh, newtons. Um, when they did, and then they closed the crack and they healed it and they redid the experiment. In this time, in this case, the, the material went to much lower loads. It's, uh, in, in this case, it's uh, uh, about 140. So if I want to estimate the healing efficiency in, in this guy, I would say this is 210 over 140. I'm sorry. It's uh, the property of the uh, healed material, 140 over 210. It's about 67% is the healing uh, efficiency in, in this particular uh, case. And so the property of the damage, by the way, is, is assumed to be uh, zero. Uh, there are, now, uh, the experiment we saw here is just one type of self-healing. Um, if, if I look at, if we focus on microcapsules, so the way, we, the, the way this lecture is presented is first we're going to focus on microcapsules, and then we're going to focus on microvascular or vascular uh, network. So... So the capsule-based self-healing, there are four different types of uh, this uh, capsule-based self-healing. So um, the, the four are explained here. Uh, so in this case, case one, uh, the healing agent is caps encapsulated. So here we're talking about beads that are, or capsules that are 10, 20, 200 or something micrometers in diameter and contain the liquid healing agent. And then we have the phase two, which is here, 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 that is dispersed in the matrix. So the phase two is kind of the catalyst for this reaction. So the phase two is in direct contact with the matrix, which is the rest of the material. But phase one is encapsulated into a hard shell. Um, the second type is here in which both phases, like the resin, one could be the resin, two could be the hardener, are separated from the matrix. And in this case, the crack has to go through at least one of each color to, for the reaction to happen. Whereas in the first one, as long as uh, one gets, uh, uh, beads of one gets broken, they will be in contact with, with two, which is dispersed in the, in the matrix. Um, in the third case is here. In this case, we actually have just one separate phase, uh, which is this guy, this guy. It could be the resin. And two is the matrix. But the matrix by itself reacts with the material inside uh, the capsules. So as soon as there's a crack that one opens, one, the contents of one will react with the matrix. So don't mistake this guy with this guy. In this guy, the matrix itself doesn't react with the, cannot react with the phase one. But in this case, it can. And the fourth type is, Again, we have one phase that's encapsulated, but the second phase that reacts with one is phase separated from matrix, phase separated from matrix. So in some sense, this and this are very similar to each other, except that here, the phase two is separated from the matrix via phase separation. So on the border of each two, 
on the border of each two here, on the border of each two, two is directly in contact with the matrix, but they're face separated. They don't like to be mixed with each other. So now if a crack propagates through them, through two and uh, uh, through one and a phase separated region, then the reaction uh, will uh, take uh, place and we will have the healing. So um, I'm gonna stop this here and continue on the next slide.